Hey there, Captains. It's Reem again with another episode of Think Gar. It's Friday, this time a Saturday morning special edition. Um, we are continuing with the series of going through the different uh, Republic ship ships that they have. Uh, today we are going to cover both versions of the Acclimator. Uh, so the Acclimator is a medium ship for the Republic. Uh, both versions have seven hull. And they both come in with this nav chart of one, click at one, at speed one. And then two, you just have the one click at speed one and that speed three, uh, you have only that click at two. So by far, biggest downfall, uh, we'll, we'll continue going through the ship, but the biggest holdback of the ship, I think, is its native navigation chart. Uh, you really need to be nav dialing to get this to go anywhere you really want. <laughs> Uh, other features of the ship are brace, uh, brace, redirect, and salvo as its defense token suite. Uh, it has three command structure, three squadron on the clam one or on the acclimator one, uh, and four engineering. So four engineering is great. Uh, three squadron is great, uh, and three command is about average, actually a little bit higher than average for medium ships, I'd say. Um, the Clam 1 has three reds out the front and two uh, black, and out the sides it's two red and a black, and the rear arc is a red and a black, which matters for Salvo as well. Uh, it comes with an officer slot, uh, two offensive retrofits, ordnance, turbo laser, and then a weapons team. Uh, this by far can make one of the best carriers, I think, uh, that are in the game. We'll also go through the titles quick here. Uh, titles, uh, we have the Nuvita B. Uh, if you resolve the squad command, each non-unique squadron that you activate gains swarm until the end of its activation. Each squadron with swarm that you activate may reroll one die attacking a ship. So that is what makes um, the Acclimators really good carriers is this title, the ability for your bombers. It's basically a built-in bomber command center. Or even if you're running like uh, the torrents, torrents can just get swarm against ships, which is good because sometimes those black dice don't always hit. The other title we have here is Implacable, and it's before a friendly ship or squadron at distance one to two suffers damage from attack. You may exhaust this card and spend up to two shields from your front hull zone to reduce the total damage by that amount. Um, so that's really good for covering your squads. It's really good for covering a ship that's in front of you. Like if there's a Venator 2 leading the charge and this is trailing behind, you can tank some of the damage there. Uh, it can also be used as like a pseudo redirect on yourself. Like if you get shot on the side and the accuracy you redirect, um, the implacable is friendly to itself. So it can exhaust this to spend two shields to negate two damage from that side. So it's really good uh, defensive title, pretty versatile. If you're not running uh, squads with your Acclimator and you have the points, it's probably good to pick up uh, Implacable. Uh, we'll go through the second version of the Acclimator here. Um, we have blue, black, flak now. Still have the same squadron, command, and engineering. Uh, nav chart's the same. Uh, we do get some different dice though. We add a blue to the front arc. And the rear arc, instead of red-black, it changes to red-blue. So a little bit better salvo and a little bit more punch in that front arc. And that's pretty potent for a medium ship there if you get this into close. That's six dice, two of them being black. Uh, can really pack a punch. This one uh, for slots has an officer, weapons team, defensive retrofit, ordnance, and turbo laser. We'll go through a couple builds here and we'll talk about some strengths and the clam uh, the strengths and faults of the acclimator so let's start back at the one so as i mentioned this makes a really good carrier so some of the best carrier ones of course are like boosted comms expanded hangar bay uh that way you can be pushing four squads uh out at distance five if you you lauren and you have a way to get tokens say from like a clone navigation officer all of a sudden this is pushing six squadrons which is quite nice especially with uh navuda b then you have six uh y wings that all get bomber command center essentially or you know help you out in the squad battle this is what i'd say is pretty standard like base build um probably not the officer the officer is kind of dependent if you're running 
Um, you'll iron it out, even if you're not activating five. This is probably close as a standard, uh, like Navuda B, that people would do. Um, if you have the points, uh, flight controllers is fine. And then also, like, uh, Link Turbo Lasers uh, is fine, or DBYs. Uh, generally, you don't want the Acclimator 1 getting into a fight. Uh, that's probably the biggest downfall of this, is it's basically um, a Quasar that costs a lot more points and only has one more hull. The Salvo doesn't really help you stay alive unless it's, like, threatening to kill something. But if it's only, like, if you're shooting, if you're dueling that long, one red dice isn't that much of a threat. Um, so the biggest problem of these is uh, they're terrible nav chart, so they don't fly as well as a quasar, and they're about as tanky as a quasar. They have a couple more shield in the front and one more hull, but that doesn't really help uh, their survivability. Uh, I really love flying these, but uh, you'll get an MC-30 or a Patriot Fist. Uh, Patriot Fist is probably the one of the worst defenders. A Patriot Fist, like... Uh, does all that fancy navvying and lands into your side arc and uh, they have like uh, swivel mounts with the whole APT uh, combo. Uh, Patriot Fist can one shot this from the side. Uh, they can roll like nine damage and get a couple accuracies, block both your tokens. They take nine and you just blow up. Because uh, of that reason I kind of moved away from them but they are a lot of fun to run and um, if you play quite cautiously with them or if you're playing casually uh, definitely pick these up. Really fun squad pushers. And if it's not too much threat on the enemy side, like towards the end of the game, like you can definitely get these in a little bit closer, get those red dice working. Uh, in which case, you know, if you have the points, the LTT uh, can be good with that because you have red and all your arcs and the salvos red dice. Uh, the other option that I've seen people do with clams that's kind of funny that I will point out is you can just make a diving clam. Uh, so you can put like boarding troopers on the clam here and then you just send it at the enemy you expect that it will probably die but you hope that you can just send it in at speed three park in front of something and then at the start of the next round you can boarding troopers them uh, you'll have like external racks on here um, you have maybe like xi sevens or whatever turbo rate whatever turbo laser upgrade you would want here but this is like the core of that build external racks boarding troopers uh you just go in there you plan on probably losing the clam but you just hope that it like punches above its weight especially with the the boarding troopers and being able to exhaust three tokens so that's like the two versions of the clam one that i have seen the two different themes that you can really push with it and how it really strives the acclimator 2 uh we'll move on to that Acclimator 2 has that little bit uh, different upgrade suite here. It loses both of those offensive retrofits and it gets one defensive retrofit, which is really nice. It makes it survivable against like the MC-30s, Onagers, uh, at least makes them live. It allows them from being two shot like the Acclimator 1. Most commonly you'll see um, electronic countermeasures or thermal shields. Uh, basically if you have a way to generate tokens, the electronic countermeasures is probably better, especially for the points. If you don't have a way to get those engineering tokens, you're probably going to see thermal shields. I've also seen people run like early warning systems on it. That is an option too if you favor that upgrade. Uh, but the Clam 1 is really a gunboat. You can do it. does have that native 3 squad, but without the offensive retrofits, you don't get the boosted cons or expanded. But if you're just pushing like an ace package, like Anakin, Ahsoka, Axe Kickback, that's only four. Uh, you can use this as a pseudo carrier. Uh, if you're pushing aces, the Navuda B doesn't help you because that's non-unique. So uh, that would not cover them. But if you want a small squad ball like the ace package, you can use the Clam 1 to command them for a turn or two um, to do that. Uh, otherwise... There's a lot of different fun things here, so we'll just slot in like thermal shields on this example. Um, this is probably one of the best platforms I think that Gar has to use clone gunners. Uh, this ship really loves clone gunners, and I'll kind of explain what you can do here. Uh, this is like 
the safe and secure build, I, I call it, or consistent build here. Um, so we have a clam one. We have clone gunners. Oh, we will need this too. Uh, we have navigation officer and we have link turbo laser towers. So at long, uh, you'll have like a confire queued up on this ship, a confire dial. Uh, so you reveal the confire dial and you check to see if you have another ship in range for clone gunners. Like if you need another ship that has range on your target. So if both ships are at distance one to five, uh, you'll use the clone nav officer to put a concentrate fire token on the other ship. Uh, then you'll take your shot, you'll roll your three reds. Um, you will see if you have to use LTT at this point. If you don't need to use LTT, uh, you'll declare like confire and you will add in the blue dice for the clone gunners set to an accuracy. And at that choice, uh, you can choose, or at that chance, you can choose if you want to add a red dice or a blue dice, because now you have a blue dice in your pool. Uh, so if you hadn't, if you haven't had to use the Link Turbo Laser Towers yet, go ahead and add that red dice. You have a reroll left. If you've had, if you are going to have to use the Link Turbo Laser Towers, if one of your natural three reds missed, go ahead and add a blue. There's no bad face on a blue unless the accuracies uh, don't work for you. Uh, and it's a very good way to get an accuracy and a pretty consistent three to four damage. Uh, having two of these in the fleet, uh, you can really kind of pick away at something. And if you do, you know, of course, get into close range, like that guaranteed accuracy on a brace is pretty ignoring, uh, pretty annoying, and you'll be confiring in blacks at that point. Um, just a solid ship uh, set up. The downside, though, with that is, like I said, these fly like bricks. So the only way I've ever had this setup really work is if uh, Bale is the Admiral. That way you can grab uh, your nav dials. Uh, the other option is if you don't want to be confired dialing, you can run these with like Tarkin as the Admiral, and Tarkin can be giving out um, concentrate fire tokens. And then you can just nav on the ship and you can use the token to trigger clone gunners. Uh, and then you don't even need the nav officer. You can put uh, some other officer uh, in the slot. But I've generally found the bail route uh, is a little bit better. And also you can have peltas with, uh, or in the, you can have peltas do the di distribution of concentrate fire tokens for clone gunners as well. But sometimes you run into timing issues where it's like you want to shoot with the acclimator first, but your ships don't have concentrate fire tokens because they spent them last round and you haven't got to pass them out from the Pelty yet. So I would say I prefer uh, the nav officer here. Um, other builds that I have tried that are quite fun with the Clam 1, um, you can go for either like veteran gunners or ordnance experts here. Uh, we turn this into swivel mounts, uh, and then we put in like APTs, and then all of a sudden you're throwing a black dice at long range because of swivel mount. Uh, you can re-roll them if you have like veteran gunners here or um, ordnance experts, and then you just go fishing for the assault proton torpedo crits. Uh, this is very dependent though on how uh, you roll that day. Sometimes you just don't get those hit crits. Some matchups you're just shooting against like a CR-90 swarm, in which case it's going to be almost impossible with all their evades to actually get the hit crits to, to land. But if you are going against, if you do find yourself going up against like ISD-1s or uh, other GAR factions, basically larges that don't have a way to negate dice at long range, um, these can be quite fun uh, to run. They can really punch above uh, their weight. And also they get that much scarier when you're getting close, when you get those natural black dice. Another really good um, punching above its weight there. Um, I guess I'll just kind of go through other all the slots here and see if there's anything else outside these two builds that I've really uh, run. Intel Officer uh, can work in this setup. Intel Officer is a fine officer for the ship. A lot of this just comes down to, like, you have to choose a theme. You have to be like going for swivels or um, you could do spinals on these. Basically how you're adding dice or if you're doing LTTs to make your dice that you have more consistent. 
and then your special crits. And then your officers will just go in there to support that. So like Adigalia gives you a little bit more def uh, more defense. Uh, can use those side arcs more. If you have Luminara, I've seen people take expert shield techs. Intel officer works fine on these. Uh, Clone navigation officer works fine. Silver can can work fine. Clone Captain Zack, you generally won't be shooting out of the side arc too much with the ship, especially if you're running like the swivels. Uh, so I'd say not the best platform for Zack. Um, I mean, if you need the extra tokens, Hondo's fine as well. I should poke, point out that Ahsoka, Ahsoka can go on either one if you're running generics. That makes that clam one especially uh, scary because you can have three of the squads you activate half swarm, half snipe. Um, quite powerful there. Um, as far as weapon team slots, like I said, clone gunners, uh, flight controllers, gunnery team is also fine. You have a very scary front arc. Um, so gunnery team works as well. I've seen like you run spinals, so you got four red dice and you run gunnery teams. So you're shooting four reds at two different targets at long range, which is pretty nice. Or an experts can work. Um, ruthless can work as well. Veteran gunners. It's just kind of whatever fits your need here. The only thing that's like really a uh, stay away from, I think, is the local fire control. You don't have enough defense tokens to try and get two salvos going here. Uh, we already went through the defensive retro. Here you can do uh, external racks uh, as an option. Great uh, extra burst damage. Probably don't need ordnance pods. Your flak is pretty fine as it is, but if you're running into a lot of uh, squads in your games, uh, it's a nice pickup. Especially if they want to, like, uh, if their ship is in your front arc and they put all of your squads in your front arc and you don't have like gunnery teams, uh, you can't shoot the squads. The Ardenance pods can help out a bit with that. It makes it so that no zone is safe. Like they can't force you to choose between shooting ships and shooting squads. And then the turbo lasers, like I said, spinals, great, great for it. Um, swivels is pretty good. I've seen XI-7s, link turbo laser towers. Uh, those are probably the most popular uh, ones, of course, if you find one that uh, appeals to you more, go ahead and try it. I've seen DBYs on like uh, really, really cheap builds or like quad battery turrets. If you're just planning to go speed one, the nav, the nav isn't terrible if you're going speed one. Uh, you get one click. It's not the best, but it's something. So if you're going speed one and just hoping they fly towards you, quad batteries is a fine upgrade. Obviously, Link Turbo Laser reroute circuits is probably the only one that you should never take because you don't have an evade. But overall, that's kind of my review of the Clam. They are both great ships. They both fill really um, unique roles and a gunship platform and then as a carrier. Um, like I said, probably one of the best carriers of the game. Uh, you just have to keep it alive. And then the Clam 1, probably one of the most point-efficient gunships in the game. You just got to keep it alive. And by the time you get all the upgrades on it, these sometimes can be pushing, like, you know, 100 points, as you can see here. Um, makes them a little bit almost too expensive if you lose them. Like, losing an Acclimator at that point um, can be pretty costly to trying to get a win. Like, that's a 100-point hole you need to dig yourself out of. And uh, they do not do well under sustained fire. If they take, like, packets of 3 damage and then 3 damage and then 3 damage, they die pretty quick. Uh, but if you park them in front of, like, an ISD-2 and you, like, thermal shields them and just take 4 blues, uh, they can punch way above their weight and probably beat the ISD-2. So... Uh, biggest challenge for them is just learning the nav chart and then like just learning your matchups and figuring out how they can um, how much punishment they can take and like what you're expecting uh, them to be able to do like how many activations are you going to get with an acclimator versus whatever you're shooting against if you dive them right in or how am I going to uh, manage the acclimator uh, one that's commanding squads because every movement since it's so restricted Every movement really matters. Like, even your turn one movement is really setting up where you're going to be on turn four, 
uh, turn three, unless you're like generating nav dials through um, Bale, or I guess if Tarkin was on this. Um, and it's just going to be really hard to keep alive against fast, punchy units like Demolishers, MC-30s, Patriot Fists, Onagers. Um, but they are great ships to run. Uh, one of the best squad pushers in the game. One of the best gunships in the game. Give them a try. Let me know if there's any other builds that uh, people love to use that I haven't really mentioned about or an upgrade that I have neglected to point uh, an upgrade I have neglected uh, to point out. And then, until next time, uh, we'll be moving on to Venators as the last ship in the Republic Arsenal. Uh, you all take care.